let's just take an example of a, a boiler that is 100,000 BTUs. So that, that, that's, our, that's our boiler size in a house that needs 100,000 BTUs. That's a properly sized boiler. If we, if we say that that boiler has a minimum firing rate of 20%, that means we have the least it can give us is 20,000 BTUs. And, and if we have a house with multiple zones, in that drawing we talked about earlier, we had we had all of these zones in this house. And let's say that one of those zones was the master bedroom, the playroom, the great room, the basement. <clears throat> it might only be a 5,000 BTU load or a 10,000. And what happens is you have the boiler firing at 20,000, but the room only taking five on the coldest day. Maybe on a mild day, it's only taking 500 BTUs. So the boiler very quickly reaches temperature because it can't give off enough heat, and it turns off. And then it very quickly turns back on. And then it turns off. And then it turns back on. So that process is called short cycling. The larger mass boilers that had all this water volume could satisfy that for quite a while before having to turn on. So your installing contractor has to be conscious of the size of the zones in order to try to minimize short cycling. There's some, there's some piping practices and there's some things that we can do if there's lots of small zones to prevent short cycling. But the most important thing he can do is size this right. And I'll give you an example. When you're going to interview a contractor and you ask them, how, how do you size your equipment? How, how do you, you know, I have this boiler in my house that was, you know, it says that it was 200,000 BTUs. You know, we, we looked on the name plate and the boiler was 200,000 BTUs and it's 25 years old. <clears throat> and the con if the contractor says, well, we're going to put another 200,000 BTUs in because that's what you had, just th th that that's not a great answer there's a few there's a few things to think about when sizing you know a question that should come up is well has anything changed in the house do you still need 200,000 BTUs um, anyone that has an older home certainly a turn of the century home knows that quite often they were built without insulation equipment used to be sized for natural ventilation for windows open so if over the years you've you know tightened the outside of the home, you've replaced windows, you've added insulation. <clears throat> this may not be 200,000 anymore, but the boiler was sized for that. So some contractors will use a rule of thumb. Oh, you know, and, and that, that I'll use 40 BTUs a square foot. That's still, that's still a guess. And they say, well, I can add up all of the baseboard and all the radiators and that's better because that, that's the connected load. You can, you can determine how much heat could be put into the house, but it's still not the best way. The best way is to perform a heat loss and gain calculation, which looks at the envelope of the house and says, if I want to be 70 inside and it's zero outside, how many BTUs do I need in this room and in this room and in this room? Add all those up and that's your total BTU requirement that's the right way to size it. And that might only be an 80,000 BTU load. And if that's the case, think of the person that was going to put in the 200 versus the contractor that's going to put in the 80. 80 is properly sized. It's less expensive. The minimum firing rate's much less. Cycle's better. What's, so, the, what's the name of that uh, analysis? That it's, you it's called a, a heat loss and gain calculation and w w there are products software products that are out there that contractors or companies like Capco will perform with the right information and that that very accurately tells us what size equipment should be so that's that's a question for your customers is to ask is there do they provide a heat loss and gain calculation when sizing equipment
So the sort of natural instinct is, when I'm putting a heating system in, is I can't go wrong making it bigger, right? So that's an incorrect assumption, is what I'm Correct. And I think that is, even, you know, all of us in the trade got in the habit of saying, well, it, it varies its size, doesn't it? Doesn't it modulate up and down? And the answer is yes, it modulates up and down. So it's, it's easy to think, well, it can't be too big. But what happens as it gets bigger is that minimum fighting rate keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And that becomes the, the place that, you know, it, it, it be, the minimum firing rate becomes too big. And so why should I be concerned about short cycling? The, when we talked about the older boilers having very few moving parts, newer boilers have many moving parts, and, and cycling is what reduces their life. So we're, we're, we're even, just this technology is reducing the useful life expectancy of newer equipment is about 15 years, properly maintained, properly sized, and if we, if we start to put thousands and tens of thousands of cycles on the fan, on the igniter, it, it wears them down and you'll have higher service costs.